Hi guys, Mr. Kane here. Good to see you. Hi guys, Mrs. G. Mrs. G? Yes, sir. Did you get a haircut? I got them all cut, Mr. Kane. Arf. It's shorter than yours. A little bit shorter than mine, yeah. Yep, if mine grows so fast it'll look longer next week. Okay, well, what we're doing today is we're talking about chemical equations okay. and chemical reactions. So chemical reactions, not physical changes, yeah? Nope, chemical reactions. All chemical. Okay, so all chemistry. Right. Awesome. All right. Some of the goals that we've got for this new unit, three things. We want you guys to be able to describe evidence and characteristics of chemical reactions. Okay. So mostly that's stuff that's going to be in this video. The evidence is the four hallmarks. We've done that ooh, before. Oh, ooh, ooh, four hallmarks. Okay, we're going to list we'll those do, again. We'll do that in a second. You, we want you to be able to write and balance chemical equations. Okay. And we also need you to be able to identify types of chemical reactions. It turns out there's five that we talk about. Okay. All right. What's first? Chemical reactions. Oh, good. I need this as a memory. Chemical reactions are indicated by gas formation, color change, energy released as heat and light, and a precipitate, a.k.a. solid, forms. The four hallmarks we learned ages ago. Oh, I'm so glad we, you reminded me, Mr. Yep. King. And uh, the whole idea here, guys, is that if you see any of these four things happening, if you're thinking it's a chemical reaction, then at least one of those chemicals has changed its formula. Okay, and these are all chemical reactions, these right, Mr. K? Chemical no reactions. No physical changes. No physical changes. Got it. Right. When we write chemical reactions, it turns out there's several ways to write these reactions. All right. Okay. Uh, now, we always have reactants on the left. Those are the things you start with. Okay. We always have products on the right. Those that are, those are the sense. things you end with. That makes sense. We Bef read left to right, okay, before and after. Before and after, exactly. Okay. Before our reactants, after our products. Okay. Now, those are key terms in the vocabulary. Okay, reactants, reactants and products. products. Okay. okay. So, one of the three ways to write an equation is a word equation. Okay. Okay, it's going to be exactly what it sounds like. You got words. Ooh. Okay. That's not so hard, but um, writing the unbalanced formula equation could be a little bit more difficult if you don't know your common ions. Yeah, because I, uh, I see things I recognize. I recognize oxygen, and I recognize carbon dioxide and water. A little shaky on the methane. Is there another word we would know for methane, Mr. Uh, King? Methane's probably carbon tetrahydride. Yep. Okay. Yep. Methane gas. So that's methane gas. It's a smelly thing. Yep. I think we discussed actually, that in my class about the cows, Mr. King. Actually, I think methane doesn't smell at all. It's the stuff with the methane yeah. that smells. Yeah. But if I was to write the unbalanced formula equation, I'd get CH4, because that's carbon tetrahydride. Mm -hmm. Otherwise known as methane, yeah. Oxygen is implying oxygen gas, one of my hell no halogens. Okay, diatomic, yeah. Right. Carbon dioxide is CO2. Yeah, that's usually gas form, yeah. And water is H dihydrogen monoxide, H2O. Uh -huh. Okay. Right? Uh, Mr. Kane, isn't Dalton rolling over in his grave right now? Isn't that, oh, it says unbalanced. I see, yeah, you know. It's not balanced. We okay. got one carbon over here and one carbon over there. That's balanced. We got four hydrogens here and only two over here. So, yeah, we're All not right. oh. obeying the law of conservation of matter. All right. When we balance chemical reactions, or formula equations, we put something called a coefficient in front, but we're not going to get into why we put this coefficients or how we do it. We'll do that in the next video. Suffice it to say, we got one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens, and two times two, so that makes four hydrogens, All right. and four oxygens, two, two oxygens here, two. plus the two more that are here. All right, so we're going to learn this right in the next video, right? We'll learn how to okay. balance the next video. Right now, what we're going to be paying attention to is how to go from word equation to unbalanced formula equation. We'll All get right. Some practice. Okay. Symbols. All right. So there are symbols in the reactions. All right. Equations are like recipes. And recipes have symbols. Yes, they do. Okay. In our specific branch of recipes, we got plus signs that mean plus added to in addition to. Reacts with. Reacts with, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Ooh, states of matter. States of matter. Do I have to write that in a parenthesis? Yes. There's it's lowercase case and it goes right after the formula, right? Yeah, right after the formula. So if I wanted to say CO2 solid, I'd do it right there. Yep. Like that. Liquid, well, that's or L's. Nice. If I wanted to do H2O liquid, I usually write it cursive. Yeah, so do yeah. I. Okay, because uh, it looks like too much like a one the other yeah, way. Yeah, the computer speak sometimes yeah. confuses me. Okay. Gases are written as G's. Yeah. 
Aqueous. AQ, all right, dissolved yeah. in water, that makes sense. Aqueous, aqua. Yeah, aqua, aqueous, dissolved in water. So solutions are aqueous. All right. Okay. And uh, an arrow means yields. Yields or produces, makes. Reacts. Rea all right. Yeah, Reacts to form. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then there's this double arrow, which means a reversible reaction is happening. It turns out that some reactions can go forwards and backwards. Okay. Right. Equilibrium, yeah, yeah, yeah I equi remember that. Equilibrium. We'll do that later in the year. All right. And then there's one last symbol that's possible, this triangle, a delta. We write it above the arrow when reactants are heated, when things are being heated up. So if I was doing something where something was burning or something was being heated, I'd write a delta above the arrow. Okay. And delta is a Greek symbol. So if you want to go to college and you want to join a fraternity or a sorority, you got to know the Greek letters because ah. you got to know which one delta, you're. Delta, delta, delta. Uh-huh. All right. Can I help you, help you, help you? Ooh, an example. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I see a typo. All right, well, let me see if I can fix that typo then. Yeah, thank you. Tricarbon octahydride. Which is propane gas, huh? I have a propane grill on my deck. Uh, burns in oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so tricarbon octahydride would be C3. C3, because tricarbon. H8. H8. Eight. All and right. a little G for gas, because it says it's propane, propane gas. Propane gas. i got to pay attention to my states of matter. Burns in must be the plus sign. Plus sign. Ooh. Oxygen gas. Hell no halogen, so diatomic. Yep, and a gas. It's a gas also. Now, burns in means that it's reacting, right? Yes. To form, I think the burning means that heat. we added a little bit yeah, of heat, right? Yeah. You have to throw a match on your propane gas to get it going. Mm -hmm. Or a little spark. Yep. Yeah. Carbon dioxide is a gas. CO2. We know that one. And if it's hot enough, I suppose the water would be gaseous too, yeah? Yeah, because when I light my, when I light my uh, gas grill, I never actually see water coming out of it, but yeah. I do see steam coming yeah, off the top. Yeah, I don't see liquid water. Yeah, right? you're so, right. So that's, that's gaseous water because it's so hot. All right, I think that's about it for that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, elemental zinc. Is zinc a diatomic, Mr. K? Uh, let's see, hell no halogen, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. No, I don't think zinc is a diatomic. Just zinc. So zinc is just going to be ZN. Well, that's a metal, so it should be a solid, yeah? Yep, solid, metal. And uh, looking at my periodic table on the wall, it's black. So that means it is a solid. Mm -hmm. Plus... Hydro oh wait, okay, hydrochloric acid. We mm -hmm. had to know five of them. H3PO4, H2SO4, HCl. HCl, and all acids are aqueous. aqueous. Yep, they're all so, in water. All right, and if you didn't know that, you might want to write that down. Yeah. All acids are aqueous. To form, that would be the arrow. To form, arrow. Do I need a delta here? Is there, is it, no, is it burning? No, I don't see any indication. It just looks like it's an aqueous reaction. I don't okay. see any indication that all right. there's heat. Hydrogen gas, another diatomic. All right, that is. That is a diatomic. That's the H that's in the, hell no halogens. Yeah. So there we go with the gas. Zinc chloride. So yeah, I have to zinc. write an ionic formula for zinc chloride. Oh, yeah, zinc chloride. Maybe I should write that yeah, up here. Yeah, put oh, that in a corner zinc. somewhere. Zinc is, is a transition plus? metal, but it's an exception to the rule. So it only ever has two plus. And chlorine is a nonmetal with a negative one charge. So I need two chlorines. Yep, so ZnCl2. Cl2. And aqueous. Yep, it says aqueous, so AQ. This is easy. That's not so hard. Aqueous sodium hydroxide. I can do this one. Okay. Oh, hold on. Maybe I should do it up here, because this isn't ionic again. Yeah, and hydroxide is one of the polyatomics. Yeah. So sodium is a 1 plus hydroxide. Oh, I know I can do this one. All right, yeah, that's easy. One of each. So sodium. Hydroxide. And it says it's aqueous, so I'm going to put yep. an AQ plus magnesium chloride. Let's okay, see. Another that ionic would be compound, but no polyatomic. Magnesium is a 2 plus. Chlorine is a 1 minus. Well, it looks like I need two chlorines again. Yeah, it kind of looks like the zinc chloride, doesn't it? it? Kind of, yeah. Probably because zinc and magnesium are the same charge. Exactly. And that says, oh, you're going to assume that's aqueous, right? Yeah, if the first one's aqueous, I'm yeah, assuming yeah. the second one's aqueous also. Right. Okay, because if one is in water, the other one's in water too. Mm -hmm. 
If it's a salt in water, then it's probably dissolving. Reacts to form, so that's the arrow. Yeah, Precipitate no delta off. again because no delta, yeah. there's yeah, no there's indication of heat. Yeah. No, magnesium hydroxide. I'm gonna have to do that one down here. Mg two plus and hydroxide is still one minus. Looks like I need two hydroxides, so I'll put a parenthesis, right? Okay. Yep. So MgOH two. And this is a precipitate. Yep. So solid. that means it's solid. Okay. And then I add to that aqueous sodium. I'm not even going to work that one out. That's no, table that's salt. Easy, yeah. That's NaCl. Yep. Uh, and table salt is aqueous, so yep. that means it's Aq. Okay. So here's a question for you, Mr. Kane. Mm hmm. If I'm writing sodium in an ionic compound on the left, and writing sodium in an ionic compound on the right, it will have the same charge. Right. Sodium is always positive one. Yeah, it's not going to change charges. Same thing for magnesium, same thing for all hydroxide right. so and chlorine. Technically speaking, I see all the exact same symbols right. on the left that I see on the right. They're just different compounds. Right. Okay. Yep, they're with different buddies, different partners. All right, got it. Okay. Okay, guys, this is the homework assignment. Chemical reactions, homework number one. Title it, name. You know what, period helps. Press pause. Quick, before the video ends.